أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Last night we had read سورة الحجرات most of it 13 آيات out of total 18 Rest of the five ayat we have to read today. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qalat al-Arab abadna qul lam tu'minu walakin qulu aslamna walamma yadkhul al-Iman fi qulubikum. Wa in tuti'u Allah wa Rasuluhu la yalitkum min amalikum shay'a. Inna Allah ghafur ar-Rahim. Sadaq Allah al-Azim. Last night I said that Surah Al-Hujrat, although it's a comparatively small surah, comprising of only 18 ayat, but this is the most important surah of the Qur'an regarding the basic principles of Islamic polity, basis of Islamic society, basis of Islamic state, the constitutional basis of Islamic state, the emotional basis of Islamic society, how to keep the Islamic society coherent, united, and then finally, what is the basis of membership of an Islamic society, or so to say, citizenship of an Islamic state. Now let us review, have a brief review. First of all, we had ayah number one. This is sufficient one ayah as constitutional basis of Islamic State. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday Allah wa rasoolihi wa attaqu Allah inna Allah samiyun alayhi. If you accept and it is put down in the constitution of a country that the sovereignty here belongs to Allah and how will it be implemented? That no legislation can be done here at any level which is repugnant to the book of Allah and the practice of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This one article is sufficient to make any state Islamic state. Luckily or unluckily we have these articles in the constitution of Pakistan. The objectives resolution now is a part of the constitution, article 2a. Sovereignty, it says, belongs to Allah, not to us. And then the article 227, no legislation can be done here, the pregnant of the kitab, the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger. But there are loopholes, these are not operative fully. Theoretically, the, all the requirements of an Islamic constitution are fulfilled by these two articles of the constitution of Pakistan. If they are fully operative, this is sufficient. Then number two, for a coherent society, you must have some emotional center also. You know Allah is beyond our perception, beyond our conception, but something about which we can feel. And that becomes a center of our love. All people love Him. Then you know the whole society will be coherent, strong, united. This emotional requirement of Islamic society is completed by the person of Muhammad Respect for him, love for him, adore him, because 
It's a very subtle thing, you know. Try to understand. We can't have a community of feeling with Allah. How he feels, we can't say. But we can have a community of feeling with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How he might have felt when the dead body of his uncle, Hazrat Hamza, came before him. Can't you imagine? Can't you feel it in your heart? How he must have felt when his daughter came to him. See, father, you know, because I bring water from the well, there are these stripes on my shoulders. And because I have to grind flour, and there are, you know, there are these things in, in my hand. So please give me some slave or, or some slave girl. He can very well understand what would be his feeling. But he said, no, daughter, these things are not for us. So here we can have a feeling. feeling. This type of feeling we can't have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Baraul wara, summa baraul wara, summa baraul wara. So love for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love him, follow him, imitate him. Not only obey him. Obedience to Muhammad is the part of the first article of constitution. The book of Allah and the practice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But here it is not obedience, it is following. It is love, it's respect. So that is actually the center of the Muslim society. Then we had eight commandments to keep this society coherent, united, strong. There should be no cracks in it. Two are major commandments. Number one, never take any decision merely on rumors. Must look into them, must investigate, and then take some steps. Number two, where there is some dispute among the Muslims, don't take it lightly and don't feel indifferently. It's your duty to make peace between them. Lift the evil in the bud. And if one party is transgressing and adamant, then now it is not a case between two parties of the Muslims, but one party pitched against the whole Ummah. Fight them. And force them to bow before the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are two very major commandments. Then six smaller commandments. At individual level, the bond of love between two Muslims can be broken. Three of these things are which are done in the presence, face to face, laughing at each other, assigning some blame to each other calling someone by some nickname which he dislikes. These things are done face to face. So that ayah, لَا يَسْتَقَوْمُ مِنْ قَوْمٍ أَسَا يَكُونُوا خَيْرًا مِنْهُ وَلَا نِسَاوْمُ مِنْ أَسَا يَكُونَ خَيْرًا مِنْهُنَّ Then three things are done in the absence. Suspicion without any basis. اِشْتَلِبُوا كَسِرًا مِنَ الظَّرْمُ إِنَّ بَعْضَ ذَنِّ اِسْمُونَ the spying that is used, what is happening in the home of that person? What to you? The spying, you know, to know. Why? If something bad comes to your knowledge without your intention, try to cover it. Not to discover something, you know. That's not good. And number three, backbiting. So six, I say, comparatively smaller commandments and two major commandments. Then was the ayah, is this society or state absolutely separate from the rest of the humanity or there are any links between this society or state on the one hand and the rest of the mankind on the other? Answer is yes. All human beings are, number one, created by one God. Unity of the Creator. And all human beings are the progeny of Adam and Eve, one pair of human beings. So there is a fraternity, a brotherhood at the level of human beings. So an Islamic society, an Islamic state can have brotherly relations with other states, other, other societies, who are not actively engaged against the Islamic state. If there is some active engagement, there is a separate matter. 
You can be generous to the mankind as a whole. No good to them, no harm. We shall find it in Surah Al Muntahina. Because after all, they are your brothers. They are also the progeny of same Adam and Eve. And Allah is the creator of you and also them. Now the last, and this is the most important issue regarding an Islamic state or a society. What is the basis of membership? Now there are two terms, Iman, Islam. Generally these two terms are used as synonymous. Iman, Islam, Islam, Iman. No difference. A Mormon is a Muslim, a Muslim is a Mormon. Generally, in Quran, at most places these words are used as synonymous. But there is a big difference. Iman, real Iman is in the heart. You cannot verify whether it is there or not. There is no electrocardiogram <laughs> up till now which can tell you that there is Iman in this heart or there is none. So it cannot become the basis of a society. Basis of society is Islam. Islam is based on five things which are external. If somebody says, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, number one. And then four modes of worship. If they establish, well, he's a Muslim. He might be a spy. Whatsoever he is, when he's caught, you can punish him. But without any reason, without any proof, you can't say you are not a Muslim. And the basis of the membership of Islamic society is Islam, not Iman. Now to make these two things separate, this ayah starts. These Bedouins are claiming that we have come to believe. Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu you have not at all come to believe. Walakin qulu aslamna. All you may say is that you have submitted, you have surrendered, you have started obeying. Aslamna. You have become Muslims, not Mormons. Walamma yadkhuli imanu fi qulubikum. Because up till this time, Iman has not entered your hearts. Iman at the tip of the tongue. Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyawmi dakhiri wa qadri khairihi wa sharrihi min Allah ta'ala wa al-ba'asri ba'ad al-ba'ad. These are words. Zalika qawluhum bi afwaihim. These are words uttered by their mouth. Whether someone really convinced of these things, it's absolutely a different story. Whether this conviction has entered his heart, reached its bottom, depths of the heart, it's a different story altogether. A world of difference between them. Now who are those people? When after the Treaty of Hudhabiya, it was the general impression in the Arabian Peninsula that, that now Muhammad is the superpower in the Arabian Peninsula. If even the Quraysh had to conclude a treaty with him, who else can oppose him now? So now there was a movement. The tribes, you know, they consulted within themselves. Okay, now we should go and we should accept Islam at the hand of Muhammad sallallahu Now a delegation has come and the whole tribe is accepted in the fold of Islam. But does it mean that in this way, Iman has entered the heart of every Muslim. A collective, a collective decision taken at a tribal level, but they are accepted as Muslims. When they said we have, we have come to believe now, no, no, no. Here you are wrong. Don't think you are falling short of something up, up till now. You are Muslims, we accept you. But not Mormons. 
ولما يدخل الايمان في قلوبكم اب تل ناو ايمان هاز نوت انترد يور هارتس وان تطيعوا الله ورسوله لو اسلام اولسو انتيلز اوبيدينس اف يو كيپ اون اوبينج الله ان المسنجر لا يلدكم من اعمالكم شيئا الله ويز نوت ديمينش اني ثينج فروم يور ريواردز اوف يور ديدز هي از جينيروس ان الله غفور رحيم ويريلي الله از forgiving and merciful logic would have said that because iman has not entered their hearts no deeds of theirs should be acceptable a person is praying and you say the iman has not entered your heart should this prayer be acceptable to allah subhanahu wa taala logically answer is no but because allah is forgiving allah is merciful he has given you this concession unless you are deceiving that's a different story then you are a munafiq if there is no intention of deception then allah subhanahu wa taala will accept your obedience but now if you want to know who a true mu'min is is the natural sequence when you tell somebody that you are a muslim not a mu'min don't think you are a mu'min naturally he should ask and tell me what are the prerequisites of being accepted as a mu'min so this is the sequence here this ayah number 15 is the most important ayah of the quran on this subject who is a true mu'min انما المؤمنون الذين امنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا باموالهم وانفسهم في سبيل الله اولئك هم الصادقون verily the true muslims are only those who believe in allah and his messenger then they don't have any doubts this belief reaches the level of conviction without any thorns of doubt and what would be the outward expression of this conviction jihad fi sabil allah and strive for the cause of allah with their belongings and with their lives ulaika humus sadiqun only such people are true if they claim that we are mu'mins this is jihad fi sabil allah for iman it is essential this is the definition a comprehensive definition of who is a mu'min two integral parts faith in the heart reaching the level of conviction and jihad in action what are the five pillars of islam iman at the tip of the tongue shahada and in action salah and saum and zakah and hajj boreal islam wala khamsin شهادة ان لا اله الا الله وان محمد رسول الله واقام الصلاه وايتاء الزكاه وصوم رمضان وحج البيت but to be a mu'min in addition to these five pillars of islam you have to have two more pillars iman not only on the tip of the tongue but also in the heart yaqeen in the qalb and over and above salah and saum and zakah and hajj jihad fi sabil now these become seven pillars of iman five of islam add to it these two pillars which are given here in this ayah number 15 so this is in this respect the most important ayah and we shall be reading now when we go through surah hadith surah saf surah munafiqun surah taghabun this subject will become clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer but this is the basis wala ta'allamuna allah bi dinikum say to them do you want to inform allah of your deen now because they didn't have real iman but they wanted to say oh muhammad we have accepted islam without fighting so so we should be given some preferences wala ta'allamuna allah bi dinikum you want to 
apprise and inform Allah of your deen. Wallahu ya'lamu ma'afi samawati wa ma'afi al-lard. Whereas Allah knows already what is there in the heavens and the earth. You need not tell him. Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. And Allah is knower of everything. Yamununu alayka naslamu. They are saying as if they have done some favor to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we have submitted and we have become, you know, Muslims without fighting, without resisting. قُلْ لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيَّ إِسْلَامَكُمْ Say, don't say that it is a favor that you have done to me, that you have accepted Islam. بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّوا عَلَيْكَ On the contrary, Allah says that He has favored you. بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّوا عَلَيْكَ عَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ That He has guided you to Iman. When you have entered Islam, now you can reach Iman. This Islam is the gateway. Now if you go on praying, you are going, you are fasting, you are reading Quran, you are reciting Quran. So, so gradually, 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 this Iman will creep into your heart, go down and down and down. So you are at the threshold of Iman. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you this blessing that you have become Muslims. In kuntum swaditeen, provided you are truthful. Maybe you are deceiving. Maybe you think that there's no use resisting now. We shall wait for some later time. Maybe there's some other time to strike. Try to strike to stage a counter-revolution. But at this time now, we can't do anything. We have to surrender. But waiting for some time, some chance, some occasion to rise up. If this is the intention, then you are monafiqeen. If this intention is not there, without any intention to deceive, you have accepted Islam, Islam is accepted. And this is actually your first step towards the road to Iman. وَلِلَّهُ يَمُنُّ عَلَيْكُمْ وَالْحَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ غَيْبَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْمَرْضِ Very real, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all the unseen of the heavens and the earth. وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ And Allah is seeing what you are doing. Now Surah Qaf. But here please note that a new manzil has started from Surah Al-Qaf. And a new Makki Madani group has also started. These two groupings of the surahs of Quran, you are familiar with them now. One is for recitation purposes into nearly equal seven parts. Manzil or Hizb, Ahsab. Second is groupings of Makki Madani, Makki Madani, Makki Madani. And they might be very small also, very big also. Somewhere the Makki portion is very long, and Madani is one Surah, Surah Nur, Surah Azab. Sometimes the Makki is very small, Surah Al Fatiha, and Madani, Al Bakara, Ali Ibrahim, Al Nisa, Al Maida, very long. But these are the groupings, Makki Madani groupings. But at two places in the Quran, I call it Quranus Sadain. Coming together of the two sacred things. Once we saw that the second group and second manzil both ended with Surah Al Tawbah and with Surah Yunus, the third group started and the third manzil also started. For the second time in the Quran, we find here. But here the difference is that with Surah Hujrat, the fifth group has come to an end. Thirteen surahs Makki, three surahs Madri. But this was the fifth group. But at the same time, the sixth manzil has come to an end. But here there is a difference, the fifth and sixth. Not the same. There at the junction of Surah Tawba and Surah Yudus, it was second group coming to an end, third starting. Second manzil having ended, third starting. 
Here it is different. Now in the rest of the Quran, starting from Qaf, we have one manzil only. The seventh manzil starts from Surah Al-Qaf. But two Makki Magni groups. Now the first of these two Makki Magni groups, it comprises of seven surahs which are Makki, ten surahs which are Madani. And both these Makki or Madani surahs of this group have a very special position in the whole of the Quran. The seven Makki surahs are the most beautiful surahs of the Quran. Surah Tuqaf, Surah Tuzariyat, and go on and go on. And one of these surahs has been given the title by Prophet ﷺ to be the bride of Quran. Surah Al-Rahman is the bride of Quran. Most beautiful and also most difficult as a piece of literature. Vocabulary-wise, most difficult part of Quran. Very difficult, but very beautiful. The rhythm, the divine music, words, every word beautiful. So these are seven most beautiful surahs of the Quran. And I told you, one is Rahman, Urusul Quran. The Prophet said, Suratul Rahman, Urusul Quran. That's the bride of Quran. Then the ten surahs, starting from Hadith, ending at Tahrim, that is also, as far as I understand, the most important part of the Quran for the Muslim Ummah. But we shall come to that later. The main theme of these two groups is Inzarul Akhirah. Warning of resurrection and warning of the day of judgment and warning of the hell, the chastisement of the hereafter. This is the main thing. So we start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qaf wal Quran al-Majid. The second surah, starting with one letter, Qaf. We had once surah Saad. The second is this. Wal Quran al-Majid by the glorious Quran. And here again, you think the, what, the, this oath is taken on what? Inna kala min al I told you, just as we had in Surah Yasin, everywhere you should feel that that ayah is understood here. Wal Quran al-Majid by this glorious Quran, verily, O Muhammad, you are the messenger of Allah. That ayah is understood here. بَلْ عَجِبُوا أَنْ جَاهُوا مُنْذِرُوا مِنْهُمْ فَقَالُوا الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا شَيْنُ عَجِيبُ But they are wondering that a warner has come to them from among themselves. So the disbelievers say, this is a very strange thing. How can a human being a warner from Allah? And more strange, أَيْذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابَ ذَلِكَ رَجْرٌ بَعِيدٌ Shall we be resurrected again when we shall have died and became clay and, and dust and nothing else will remain from us. Well, this returning again to life is beyond any imagination. Rajum Baid. We very well know, but the earth diminishes from them. And we have a book which has the total record of everything. But they have belied the truth when it has come to them. So now they are confused in this matter. Don't they see to this, to the sky over them, to the heaven over them? Kaifa banaynaha? How have we constructed it? Wazayyannaha? And then adorned it? Wamaalaha min furuj? And there are no cracks in it. 
وَالْأَرْضَ بَدَدْنَاهَا And the earth we have spread. وَالْقَيْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِيَا And we have fixed mountains over it. وَأَمْبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجِمْ بَهِيجْ And we cause to grow therein of every lovely kind of vegetation. تَبْ سِلَةً وَزِكْرَا This is actually to give the mankind an insight and admonition, reminding for every person who turns to him, to Allah. وَنَزَّلَّا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا مُبَارَكَ And we send down from the heaven the blessed water of rain. فَأَمْبَتْنَا بِهِ جَنَّاتِ مُحَبُّ الْحَسِيدِ And with that we made to grow the gardens and the grain of harvest. These are two things. A garden, the tree remains there. Only you pluck the fruit. But in the field, where you do, you have this grain, the whole you know, plant is taken off. So that is Habbal Hasid. And gardens are Jannat. وَالنَّخْلَ بَاسِقَاتِ اللَّهَ and there are tall date palms. They have ranged clusters. All this we have created as a sustenance for our servants. And with this, we revive a land which had become dead. In the same way, you will come out from this earth one day. Where will you go? You will be in this earth. Where from did you come? From this earth. Minha khalak nakum. And anyhow you will go there. If somebody is burnt, then the ashes, where do they go? Although you have spread it in Ganges, Ganga mein bahadi hai. Anyhow, final where will you go? In the ocean? Then settle down. It is going to be a part and parcel of the same earth. From the earth we take out trees, and from the earth, we will take you out. كذلك الخروج كذلك قبلهم قوم نوح واسحاب الرس وسمود Belied before them the people of Nuh and the dwellers of Arras and Samud, the nation of Samud. وعادن وفرعون وإخوان لود Also the Aad, the Fir'aun and the brethren of Lut عليه الصلاة والسلام واسحاب الأيكة and the dwellers of the Wood, thick wood, that is the Sahab al-Madiyan. وَقَوْمُ تُبَّعَ And the people of Yemen, people of Tubba'a. كُلٌّ كَذَّبَ الرُّسُلَ All of them belied their messengers. فَحَقَّ وَعِيد So my threat came true on them. They were destroyed, decimated, annihilated. أَفَعَيِّنَا بِالْخَلْقِ الْأَوَّلِ Very beautiful style. What do you think? Have we been exhausted due to this first creation? Our creative potential has finished. We can't create again. No. Have we been exhausted? أَفَعَيِّنَا بِالْخَلْقِ الْأَوَّلِ بَلْ هُمْ فِي لَبْسِ مِنْ خَلْقِ الْجَدِيدِ Actually, they are in doubt about a new creation. The shortcoming is here in your minds. Allah doesn't lack the power and authority and ability to recreate. But only you can't reach there. Your minds are low. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ دَسُّ And verily we created the man. And we very well know what his animal soul whispers into him. This id or libido. Our animal instincts, what is coming up, and from, you know, our subconscious mind, these things come up. And we mostly act according to that. Even we don't know. But we are under the influence of our subconscious mind. Our id or libido is driving us. So Allah knows, whatever is whispering is this your nafs doing with you. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ And we are nearer to the human beings than their own jugular veins. 
we are very subtle you can have no conception no perception of us but don't think we are far away these two things are absolutely different we are nearer to you than your jugular veins nahnu aqrabu ilayhi min habl al warid is yatalaqqa al mutalaqqi an al yamin wa al shimal qaid just imagine when the two receivers angels receive seated one on the right and the other on the left we have two angels everybody has two angels with us they are recording whatever we are doing even every word which comes out recorded ma yalfid min qawlin he utters not a word illa ladaihi raqibun atid but there is a watcher over him no word goes in vain by uttering word either you have earned some good deed or some bad deed with each word this words these words never go in vain either you have sown a good seed or you have sown a seed of a thorny bush that you will have to have in the year after with every word that you utter wajat sakratul maut bil haq it's very beautiful you know what has happening throughout the life this is given here whatever we act there are two receivers of allah subhanahu wa taala two angels they are recording everything now the time limit has come now comes the time of death wajat sakratul maut bil haq and then the agony of death overtakes man zalik ma kunta minhu tahid then someone would say to him this was what you used to shun and avoid very important psychological reality every man tries to push away from his mind the idea of his death he sees people dying he joins their funerals prays for them but will it come to me no 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 push it away he busy go on you wanted to shun it you never thought that time will come bajat sakratul maut bil haq zalika ma kunta minhu tahid but now the third stage wa nufiqa fi sur zalika yawmul wa'id and then the trumpet will be blown and that would be the day of the threat about which the messenger is warning you that day will come what will happen wajat kullu nafsin ma'aha sa'iqun wa shaheed every soul will be will come to the lord and with it will be two angels one will be pushing him go ahead the other will be carrying the record this is his book of deeds will be that is to testify witness but jaat kullu nafsi maaha saiqun driver pusher wa shaheed and a witness laqad kunta fi ghaflatin min haza it will be said to them you had been heedless of this day you didn't think that it come it will come you thought these are the stories of the ancients they have no reality لقد كنت في غفلة من هذا فكشفنا عنك غطاءك فبصرك اليوم حديد now we have taken away the veil or the curtain which was before your eyes now today your sight is piercing you can see everything all the fundamental truths of this universal creation now you are seeing them فقال قرينه هذا ما لدي عتيد And now his companion will say, 
This is he who was in my charge. It is, he is present. Al-Qiyah fi jahannam kulla kaffarin abid. It will be said, both of you, because two angels will be coming with them, with every soul, one driving and one carrying the record, that is the witness. So to them there will be the command, cast you both into hell every ungrateful and stubborn one. Man nail lil khayr mu'tadi murib, who was hinderer of the good. He wanted to put obstacles in the way of good and truth. Mu'tadin, transgressor, murib, and doubter. Alladhi jala ma'ala ilaha nakhara. Who set up with Allah another God? Falqiyahu fil azab is shadeed. Now throw him in the very severe chastisement. Qala qarinuhu. Now the Satan with every soul. We have read before. For every human being there is a Satan also. Now that Satan will say, Rabbana maat gaitu, O my Lord. I never led him astray. Walakin Kanafi is a lalim ba'id. He himself was in the error far away. I shouldn't be thrown into the fire with him. I never led him astray. He himself was wrong in error. Ta'ala la takhtasimu nadayya. Allah would say, Now we don't quarrel with each other before me in my presence. وَقَدْ قَدَّمْتُ إِلَيْكُمْ بِالْوَعِيدُ And I had already sent you the warning. وَمَا يُبَدَّلُ الْقَوْلُ لَدَيَّ مَا يُبَدَّلُ الْقَوْلُ لَدَيَّ Nothing can be changed in my presence. No words can be changed. وَمَا أَنَا بِذَلَّامِ لِلْعَبِيدُ Nor I am unjust and cruel to my servants. All creation. Whether a kafir or a Muslim, they are all my creation. I am not going to be unjust to anyone. The kafir disbeliever or the opposer of the truth, well, he will have what he did. That's all. And those who did good deeds, served Allah and His deen, they will have their reward. Yawma naqoolu li jahannam ahalim talate. Imagine the day when we shall say, to the hell. Are you filled up? وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ And it will say, Are there any more? I am ready to take more. وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ At the same time, the paradise, the garden will be brought nearer to those people who were muttaqis, who were God-fearing in the world. And that garden was not very far off. And it will be said, Haza ma tu'aduna le kulli awwa bin hafiz. No. This is what you were promised. For each one who keeps on returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is always remembering and repenting, Mani khashiyar rahmana bil ghayb. Who feared Rahman, the compassionate, in the unseen. Wajabi qalbi muneeb. And he has come here with a heart which is penitent. Qalbi muneeb, qalbi saleem. This heart, you have not polluted it with bad deeds. The Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you commit something, some wrong, some sin, there is a black dot on your heart. If you repent, it is cleared. If you repeat, another dot. Repeat, another dot. Till that time that the whole, whole heart becomes black. And it becomes like this, closed. Now, no good sermon, no good reminding, no good admonition can enter it. But whosoever brought the heart in a healthy, a natural way, he had kept it as a 
trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and brought it back to Allah. So for him, Man Khashir Rahmana Bil Ghaib wa Jaab Qalbi Munib. For them the garden is here. Udkhuluha bi salam. Now enter it, enter this garden with peace, having no fear. Zalika Yawmul Khulud. This is the day of ever abiding. You have to live here forever and ever. لَهُمْ عَيْشَاؤُنَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ They will have in that garden whatever they will wish to have. And we have more. What is that more? فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَةِ عَيُنْ Many things which we can never imagine here in this world. Those bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever we know, whatever we wish, whatever we can wish, whatever we can desire for, all these things will be already present. And then whatever you call for, whatever you demand, whatever you order, it will be presented. لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاهُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ وَكَمْ أَحْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُ بِالْقَرْنِنْ How many a generation... We destroyed before them. They were more mightier in their prowess. So they penetrated the lands, conquering this area, then that area, devastating that area. All big nations do this. When they have might and power, they trample the earth. فَنَقَبُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ هَلْ مِنْ مَحِيسِ Was there any place of refuge for them? When the command of Allah came and they were to be destroyed, they couldn't find any refuge for them. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَ لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ This ayah is very important. Quranic psychology. Definitely in this, is a reminding for that person who either has a heart or he gives his ear while he is mindful. Now there are certain persons whose heart are healthy at their natural state. They get the guidance directly. Just as the revelation came to the heart of Muhammad sallallahu directly, not, not through these, these years, no. He, he didn't hear Jibrail with these ears, no. It was a direct descending on the heart of Muhammad sallallahu Now, you, if you have a sound heart, Allah's guidance will come to you directly, without your effort. If there are certain curtains, some obstructions, then you have to listen carefully and mindfully. That is the second way of getting guidance. In the Fizarika la Zikra, Liman Kana Lahu Kalbun Aw Al Kasama. Or he gives his ear fully. Bahua Shaheed and he is mindful, attentive. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقَ لِلْسَبَابَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ اَيَّامٌ And verily, and correctly, and surely, we created the heavens and the earth, and whatsoever is in between them, in six days. Now this subject has been repeated in the Quran several times, several times, six days. And I have been saying we can't understand these six days. We should say six cycles of time, six periods of time. Maybe at some time, whenever knowledge of cosmology and the knowledge about the creation of the universe advances, maybe we understand it, but not up till now. But here something has been added. And no fatigue or weariness, weariness touched us. Why? Because it is in Torah, the book of Genesis. 
that Allah created this universe in six days, and on the seventh day He rested. This is, you know, how the human mind crept into these books. Because the real Torah disappeared from the world in the year 587 B.C., when Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem, and everything was destroyed. Temple was raised to the ground. Torah was lost. After about a century and a half, it was rewritten from memory. So here in this rewriting of Torah, the human concepts, they entered. And this is human concept. When you work for six days, then you need one day of rest. So they thought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worked very hard to create this whole universe in six days. So on the seventh day, he took rest. Allah says, no. We are inexhaustible. Our energy is never exhausted. We never feel tired. We don't need any rest. No weariness even touched us. فَاسْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ So, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now endure with patience whatever they are saying. I told you that in the first three years of his ministership, ministry, this is a Christian term, when Muhammad started sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his mission, for three long years, the persecution that came from the kuffar was, number one, only verbal, no physical assault for three years. And number two, this verbal persecution was also centered on the personality of, of the Prophet only. So that if we can kill his will, everything will be okay. Why to beat others? If his will is killed, he loses heart, he gives up this tabliq, well, okay. That is why you will find in these early surahs, فَاسْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ In Surah Al-Muzzabbil, فَاسْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ وَاحْجُرْهُمْ حَجْرًا جَمِيلًا So you have to show patience on what they are saying about you. And we read in, in Surah Al-Hijr, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ يَزِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ We very well know that your chest shrinks on what they are saying about you. Somebody comes and says, he's a shire, he's a poet, he's a soothsayer, kahin, soothsayers. Or he's a possessed person, some evil spirit has possessed him, some jinn has possessed him. Or he gets the dictation from someone. Or he is forging a lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever they are saying about you, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَزِيقُ صَدْرُكَ Due to the grief, your chest shrinks. But you have to take it patiently. فَاسْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ And glorify your Lord with His praise. قَبْلَ طُلُعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ الْغُرُوبِ before the rising of the sun and before its setting. Two prayers in the beginning. First of all, there was only the night prayer. No prayer during the day. After some time, two prayers. One, that is Fajr, before the rising of the sun. Second, the Asr, before the setting of the sun. قَبْلَ تُلُوِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا قَبْلَ الْغُرُوبِ وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحْ هُوَاتْ بَارَ السُّجُودِ And now, out of that long standing of the night, it was, relief was given. Some time of the night also. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ From the night time also, فَسَبِّحْ هُوَاتْ بَارَ السُّجُودِ Glorify Him. Vadbara sujood, and after the prostrations, when you have prostrated, you have prayed, then after the prayer also, 
that Tasbeeh al-Fatimah, رضي الله تعالى عنها, the Tasbeeh that was taught by Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to his very dear daughter Fatima. You say 33 times, Subhanallah, 33 times, Alhamdulillah, 33 or 34 times, Allahu Akbar. So this is after prostrations. وَاسْتَمِعْ يَوْمَ يُنَادِ الْمُنَادِ مِنْ مَكَانٍ قَرِيبٍ And listen attentively. On the day when the caller will call from a near place, when the tremper will be blown, it will appear as if someone is calling, and not calling from very far off, from a very near place. يَوْمَ يَسْمَعُونَ السَّيَحَةَ بِالْحَقِّ The day when will they, they will hear an awful cry with the truth, having a very big effect. That will be the day of your coming out from your graves. So this is the second trumpet. At first trumpet, Sa'ah. Ya ayu al-Nas, Attaqu rabbakum inna zalzala ta sa'ah ta shayun azim. That zalzala, that earthquake, that shaking, everything would be shaken. When the mountains will move like clumps. So that is first trumpet. We have read it in Surah Zumar, in the last, last but what section. وَنُوا فِي غَفِي السُّورِ فَسَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَابَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ سُمَّ نُوا فِي غَفِيَ اُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْزُرُونَ Now this is their اُخْرَى يَوْمَ يَسْمَعُونَ السَّيْحَةَ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُرُوجِ That will be the day of coming out of the graves. إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِي وَنُمِيد Verily, O mankind, you should know it is we who keep you alive. The saying of the Kafir was, Nahya wa namut. We ourselves live and we ourselves die. But the reality is, Inna nahnu nuhi, we keep you alive. You can't live by yourself. Banumit, and we shall make you die. Wailan al Masir, and then to us will be your return. Yawma tashakakul ardu anhum sira'a. The day when the earth will split asunder from them, and they will be coming out running. Sira'a. Zalika hashrun alayna yaseer. This is the gathering of the Day of Judgment, which is very easy on us. It's not hard. It's not difficult for us. Again, that what they are saying. We very well know. We know better than you know, O Muhammad sallallahu what they are saying. And you are not a compeller over them. You can't compel them to accept your... Your call. We have not given you the authority. Maanta alayim bi musaytir. No maanta alayim bi waki. Here. No maanta alayim bi jabbar. You can't compel them. They have a free choice of their own. Imma shakiram wa imma kafura. Inna hadayna hu sabila. Imma shakiram wa imma kafura. Faman shaaf al yomin wa man shaaf al yakfun. In Surah Al-Kahf. This is a free choice of every human being. And for you it is only that you can remind them, admonish them. فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٌ So admonish them. Remind them with Qur'an. Whosoever fears the threat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what is this taskeer? As I told you before also, in our ruh, in our spirits, we have, number one, the knowledge of Allah, number two, the love of Allah. Because this has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is dormant, sleeping. Our animal being has crushed it. Our attention is only towards our animal being. We don't pay, pay any heed to our ruh. But when Quran comes, by the recitation of Quran, there is a sympathetic vibration. 
you know, sympathetic vibration. And this is the activation of the dormant consciousness of the knowledge and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is activated. The catalytic agent is Quran, but the real chemicals, they are already present in your own existence in the form of ruh. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.